Well, it's eight o'clock, and I think with it being eight o'clock, I will start the start the virtual open house by just describing how excited I am that we've arrived at this point where we're going to open the museum again, um, which has been closed since March 13th. And it's very special that we're opening with Gilbert Lewis, Many Faces, Many Figures, and that it's a show, you know, that in a lot of ways has been percolating for years now at Woodmere. Um, I came to know Gilbert Lewis's work through Bill Scott, who was a close friend of the artist, and through Bill, um, and through Eric Rimshaw and Jim Fulton, um, who are who are Gilbert's caretakers, um, you know, I, I feel that uh, the work of Gilbert Lewis became integrated into the life of the museum. So it's a really nice um, it's a really nice coming together that at this milestone moment, as we prepare tomorrow to open our galleries again, with just which feels like such a breath of fresh air, we're doing it with the work of Gilbert Lewis. I decided that um, you know I would open up this talk, and you know I'm assuming people are joining as I'm speaking, but that um, the first image I would show, and and the first image that visitors will encounter when they walk into the galleries, is this self-portrait of Gilbert. It's called self-portrait from a photo booth, photo, and you can imagine the type of photograph it's based on. This was unusual for Gilbert. He didn't usually work from photographs, but this time he did. And, you know, there are a lot of things I love about it. We could talk for about an hour about this self-portrait, but he's really working with the observed conditions of the photograph. So his face is bleached out by the overexposure. Um, one ear is kind of lost in the shadow. One is picking up the bright light. But then, of course, I think the, the sort of the drama of the image is that his eyes are closed and turned inward. And I think it's such a nice image um, for this artist because, to me, everything that he does um, is deeply thoughtful and poetical. And I kind of I feel this image of Gilbert Lewis um, you know, when I look at his works of art. So I thought it was a nice place um, to begin. The other place that I wanted to begin was to recognize Eric Rimshaw. And Eric has been Gilbert's caretaker. Um, and I thought, you know, really as family, I would ask Eric to just start this conversation by just um, offering a toast perhaps to Gilbert. Do you can't be with us, but do you mind if I have about two minutes, few words, Bill? Please, I would love you to. Thank you, Eric. Well, thanks, Bill. Um, we ha I have to thank Bill for for being the champion of Gilbert's work, and we have to thank his team for creating a organizing a beautiful and very truthful exhibit. Um, when Bill said I should say something, I decided my role was to give you a little background. I met Gil in fall of 1979 when I was 27, and we were lovers for two and a half years. We parted friends, and we have we have come we have come in and out of each other's li other's lives ever since. For the last six years, my husband Jim and I have managed his life and a huge portfolio of work with the expert help of Bill Scott. What I want you to know about Gilbert is that his personality, life experiences, ability to see knowledge of technique and materials, and his life as a gay man are, com are complexly intertwined. His story is one that is true for many people of our generation. He did, not, he did not seek to make a statement about his sexuality. He simply knew what he wanted to paint, and he did it. It took at least another generation to catch up and the result in this, in this public show of, of his work. Gilbert only painted from, from life models and found himself, found himself tutoring or guiding many of them, many of these models to be true to themselves. And while he painted their port, while he painted his portraits, he would paint some of his models three, four, and in some, in, in one instance, 40 times. I often thought that Gilbert managed, one imagined himself being, being a painter to the Medici in Italy. <laughs> he painted every day and up until his dementia took his focus. He would be thrilled and horrified by this, by, by the focus of this exhibit. He was, not a sh he was not shy about painting or the men he painted, but the real world often caused him to pull in and protect himself. So Jim and I, Jim and I are drinking a dry gin martini tonight in his honor. 
um, because that's what we all drank together. So cheers to Gilbert. Cheers. <laughs> cheers to Gilbert. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. That was that was really beautiful. And there is a sadness over, you know, all aspects of this endeavor. And this is a this is a multi venue endeavor, and that will come out across um, across this presentation. Gilbert's show at Woodmere is part of a citywide celebration of Gilbert Lewis that's happening. This is his time. Jody Throckmorton is with us from the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts and Jody will describe what's, what's happening at PAFA. There is a digital project happening at the William Way LGBT Center. And there are two very special, very wonderful, very different commercial galleries that have been involved in Gilbert's work recently. And that's Cap Cap, Cap and uh, Sam Cap is joining us from New York. Sam has a gallery in New York and in Philadelphia on 13th Street, and it's an exciting place. And Patrick Torrentian, whose gallery is kind of based in Hudson, New York, but has an extraordinary um, internet reach, um, has also been involved in the sale and packaging and sort of digital life of Gilbert Lewis in some really wonderful ways. So I'm so happy that uh, Patrick and Sam, Jody, you're with us tonight, and I'm just warning everybody that we're gonna, um, you know, hear from, you know, from many of us uh, through the course of, of this virtual open house. Also, I would say, um, Hildy Tao, who's Woodmere's Director of Education, is here. Hildy is going to be monitoring the chat stream, and what I'm going to suggest is that if you have questions, please put them into the chat stream so that you don't forget them. Hildy's going to be watching the chat stream, and then she will sort of organize the stream of questions um, at the end. And they might be questions for me, they might be questions for Eric, they might be questions for Jody or Patrick or, or Sam or, or whomever, or they might be questions for, you know, other people who are um, here on the Zoom. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Um, this is a photograph from yesterday, and um, Jim and Eric and myself and my husband, Glenn. So those are two bald husbands in the gallery, standing six feet apart um, in the first gallery of the exhibition. And I thought that my remarks um, would just introduce the idea that, you know, we are so happy to be opening with Mere tomorrow. We're doing so in ways that we believe are safe. I was on the telephone today twice with the Department of Public Health of the City of Philadelphia to make sure that we have everything correct as we open the galleries with you know, reduced capacities in the galleries. Uh, Rick Orwine, who you know is our wonderful exhibition designer and deputy director of Woodmere for exhibitions has um, set up the exhibition with an installation where you know, each grouping of paintings is set up so that people yeah, yeah. looking at the exhibition would naturally fall six feet apart. And, you know, that's what I'm showing you here um, with, with Jim and with Glenn um, looking at the paintings. This is the first of three galleries that um, are dedicated to the exhibition. And these are Gilbert's paintings of young men. And this is probably the largest concentration in, in his body of work, his fascination with, with young men, people who are no longer teenagers and not yet fully formed adults, I think is the only way to describe it. And the sort of innocence and complexity of what that means. I'm showing right here a work um, in Woodmere's collection, a gift from Eric and Jim. A large work, not quite full size figure, but larger than half size figure. It's called The Dancer. And to me, it typifies so many of the things that I love about Gilbert Lewis, an extraordinary humanitarianism to everything and every person that he depicted. This is a real live flesh and blood <laughs> human being who's depicted in a kind of caressing beauty there is a gorgeous sense of color throughout Gilbert's work. And sometimes you 
look at his paintings and say, geez, he organized this whole painting around that color purple and the slight green in the wall and the red on the floor. And, the, you know, it, it, it's all, you know, it, it's about that intense, spectacular color and texture. That is a velour shirt um, ha that has not been in fashion since the late 1980s. A loose velour, kind of loose turtleneck. You can tell that's what it is. You know, one of the, the things that's spectacular about Gilbert's work is his attention to light, not only the drama of the shadow catching the silhouette of the figure against the floor, but something that I find just breathtaking in this portrait is the purple light that's reflecting off the shirt and onto the figure's neck and just just caressing um, the figure with that that purple tone, which is, you know, the kind of thing that you know, something I love in an artist is where the details just take your breath away. And, and I find that in Gilbert's work. This is a dancer. We know that from his shoes. Gilbert insisted that his, um, his models who posed for him um, bring their own clothes, present themselves as they wish to be presented. And so this is a the title is Dancer. We know he's a dancer from his shoes. He's swaying to the side, he's gesturing with his hands, it's a figure in motion. There's an elegance to the line of Gilbert's work, and I think you can really see that in the beauty of his fingers. This is someone with an ease with the human body and the human figure in terms of line. And then finally, um, you know, Eric said a little bit earlier that, um, you know, that, that, that Eric Sitters could come across as a Medici character or a Medici prince. And I really feel that I see that here in, in this young man with his curly bangs that there's something so elegant. And, and with his velvet shirt, I can't imagine him stepping out of, you know, a Pontormo portrait from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And something to know about Gilbert is that, you know, this is an artist who loves art history and loves museums and, um, is, is digesting the history of art and bringing it to a kind of Philadelphia realism um, that's, that's, that's all his own. Um, so this to me is, is an image that um, encapsulates the exhibition. Another thing that I love about Gilbert Lewis is that he's a great storyteller. And so while his stories are about these characters, um, like all great storytellers, I think, um, he tells stories through details. And um, this is a wonderful portrait of a young man. Um, he's got on his arm a tattoo of a dagger in heart, which, you know, if, if you know anything about ancient Rome, right, this is a symbolism that goes back to the times of Augustus. And it, it I mean, it found its way into tattoo iconography, but it's all about love betrayed. So here's this young man and he seems so tender um, and yet there's already an awareness of life's, 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 you know, life's tragedies or sadnesses or losses or, and um, he wears it on his arm and you need to pay attention to the details to get that, the details of jewelry, the details of, of furniture, the details of how the space is configured, um, the detail, you know, he's not wearing socks, for example, is, you know, to me, something telling here. Gilbert Lewis is also an artist who is a master of his medium. A lot of what we're going to see today is gouache and watercolor on paper. He often used gouache and watercolor together. One is more opaque, one is more watery. Um, but um, he also did beautiful work in pencil. Graphite was an important medium for him. And I'm showing two portraits of the same sitter, a fellow named Dave. And Dave was somebody that as I understand it, Gilbert came to know because they both worked together in Blick art supply stores that through his career and through his life, Gilbert, who was a master technician, um, sometimes worked in art supply stores and had a real um, expertise and, and sophistication and know-how about artist materials. And I think that comes across in the exhibition and we've tried to group things together. And again, here, 
I have to give credit to Rick Ortwine. These two pictures, oh, they're the same sitter, but they sit together on the same wall. And you feel the depth of character. This was somebody um, you know, that Gilbert came to know at, at Blick Art Supply. And you really, you know, he really looks into this young man's eyes. But you can also see his ability to use different materials in you know, equally profound ways. And I think that's something that comes across in the show. Gilbert was ahead of his time in depicting gay subjects. And that's one of the remarkable things about his work, um, going back to the late 1960s and 1970s and right up to you know, some of his very last works. He is depicting the world that he knows as a gay man um, you know, before you know, having a queer eye was something that um, you know, was kind of a mainstream thought and no big deal. Um, but this was a big deal. And so there are depictions of gay couples like this preppy couple wearing their Izod shirt. And there's a real sense of humor in this. Uh, Gilbert has a sense of humor for sure. And we'll see that in some other works, but here they are with their Izod bright colored, you know, purple and greenish shirts and a, a green Izod belt. I mean, what nerve, but you know, Gilbert's Gilbert's figures wear their own clothing. And so it is a record of the times. I mean, 1983, I mean, this is the preppy moment of fashion history. And, you know, there it is. You know that they're lovers, you know, from their matching white pleated pants. Um, they seem very complimentary, that is to say. But there's also this wonderful gesture, you know, not only the way the one figure has his arm around the other figure and on his shoulder, but that wonderful gesture of the figure whose arm is behind the other figure and then his thumb is tucked into the belt loop, a kind of intimacy that, you know, you know for sure these are not brothers, um, these are lovers. And, and I love that about the painting. On the right, um, a painting that's not in Woodmere's show, but will be in the Patha show, um, a work that, you know, shows a young man in profile, a model named Tony Rulo. And um, Jody will be talking about, about this maybe a little bit more. But there he is um, in profile and beyond him in another room in the dark, a figure sleeping. And, you know, maybe even another portrait of Tony sleeping. It's hard to tell. Is he imagining this other figure? Um, is this other figure actually there? We don't quite know, but there's a mystery there. And I think that Gilbert takes gay subject matter and sort of the gay interior life and makes that um, his subject matter. And he does it in a beautifully gentle and thoughtful way. Um, but of course he loves the theatricality of gay culture. And um, we have in our exhibition, the wonderful drag queen and gold shoes and um, costume and spectacular clothing appear all throughout the exhibition. Gilbert painted mummers for a special project that he did for the Mummers Museum. And we've got a spectacular mummer and you can just see he's having so much fun painting this mummers costume. And there's his own kitchen off to the left. So this fantastical out of worldish kind of character. Um, but then he has a very ordinary kitchen with pots and pans um, off to the left or then um, this fellow in the tuxedo, which is a really wonderful painting. And, um, you know, here's a work where the Zoom reproduction or the online reproduction does not do justice to how spectacular the black on black textures of the satin lapel and the velvet collar and a different kind of textured satin kind of bow tie. Um, you, the, you know, the, 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 the tuxedo studs are their own metal texture. And of course, so are the patent leather shoes. It's a tour de force where he's really showing off that he can just really get it and really do it and show off um, you know, his, his virtuosity in, in depicting textures. But there's this real love of, of costume. And you know, in addition, um, you know, there's a real gay history in Gilbert Lewis's work. Um, this is a portrait of a model named Dennis Dunwoody, who was a friend of Gil Gilbert's, who came to Philadelphia as Gilbert did from someplace in the South. 
They knew each other because they went to the same hairdresser, um, Gilbert's friend, Victor de Meza, with whom he traded art for haircuts. And um, Dennis Dunwoody um, was a man who owned a vintage clothing store in Philadelphia. He was known for his wicked sense of humor. Um, he was known for wearing glitter platform high heel shoes when he walked in for his haircut um, at the hair salon on 19th Street, just off of Rittenhouse Square at a time when seeing a man wearing high heel platform glitter shoes really turned heads and was something that was remarkable or something that got noticed. Um, and, and what I love about you know, so, so you know, this is a you know, this is a piece of Philadelphia's gay history. Um, there's also a sense of humor here, and a sense of you know, Gilbert and Dennis. I have to imagine collaborating somewhat on this image. The shadow of Dennis's hands look like a gigantic penis there, but of course we know that it's not because Dennis is wearing a nice pair of tight black underpants. But of course, um, the joke here and um, what I was told is that, you know, the making of this image was really a Philadelphia image. It's all about William Penn and that image of William Penn on top of City Hall and the way it looks like William Penn's um, genitalia are sticking out on top of City Hall, but of course it's um, a feather or something like that that William Penn is holding in the Alexander Sterling Calder sculpture. So it's a real sense of humor and kind of just joy in gay humor in Victor, in, in, um, in, in Gilbert's work. Um, another thing I love about Gilbert's work um, is this, there's a strange distortion to the figure, a stylization, a, you know, as much as there's attention to detail, there is an enlargement of eyes and narrowing of figures. I had mentioned earlier, Gilbert is an artist who is going to museums all the time, and several works in the exhibition are from a series he did um, at different times, I believe, in his career of, um, you know, copied after Coptic, portraiture. So early Christian, Judeo-Christian, Mediterranean, first century, second century AD. Um, I'm imagining Gilbert in the museum copying after these wonderfully quirky um, portraits that, that he loved. And I can imagine them channeling somehow into his treatment of the figure. Um, this this shirtless young man with a gold chain around his neck is in our show as well. Um, you really can't stand in front of him and not feel that he pulls you in from the eyes. And with this, I'm gonna hand over the, the talking to my friend Patrick Terentian of TerentianGallery.com, who's gonna, I think, launch from, from this particular work into the next slide. And Patrick, you'll just tell me when you want me to advance the slide. Certainly, certainly. I just want to say thank you so much, Bill, and the supporting staff, Woodmere, for making this happen. Amazing, <laughs> heroic achievement. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I want to talk about two paintings, uh, one of which is in my collection and one of which is in the show. And you are seeing it right now. It's the portrait of um, the young man shirtless. I chose the two paintings that I wanna talk about because they are so direct and simple. They have a real absence of um, accoutrement. There's very little fashion. The backgrounds are monochromatic. They're very straightforward. And um, I, if I may, I'd like to read just a little bit from one of uh, Gilbert's undated artist statements, because I think it will shine some light on it. He says, figurative art is a vital active process. The image has its own meaning, not storytelling, not just a picture of a face or a flower. Neither is it simply an exercise in the arrangement of shapes or colors. I want to translate my immediate impression into paint to present the image of an outstretched branch of flowers or a face, direct and simple. So first of all, we got this painting of this young man and um, <laughs> the expression is incredibly open and um, 
I would say not, not so innocent for such a young guy. Maybe he's 17, 18. Um, it's a very confident expression. Uh, I think there's a sexual awareness to it. And um, the, only, the only piece of, of uh, accessory that he's wearing is this gold rope chain. And if you were around at that time in the 80s, you would know that this is a, a, a symbol of kind of, uh, it's a status symbol. It's a symbol that you've arrived, that you're a, you're a guy now, and um, you know, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna, you know, you're sexually mature. So um, I think these were important details that uh, we, there are clues that we can use to interpret this piece. Uh, Gilbert gave them to us. And um, something else I want to talk about is the stylization, because the next piece is very much like this one in that uh, the face is very elongated. I've sh uh, a lot of people I've shown these images to describe the work as a bit cartoonish or caricature-like, but I kind of reject that. I kind of just see it as abstraction. I think it serves a higher purpose than just um, um, I'd like to read something, just a few more sentences from his statement that might shed light on why Gilbert made such exaggerated eyes, uh, the length of the face. I mean, if you look at this picture, the neck is massive. It's almost like a pedestal that the head sits on and the shoulders are huge. Um, just a few sentences. My art reflects human concerns expressed symbolically through fantasy and in a more concrete manner in the process of making the representation itself. So I don't think we should um, ignore uh, the element of fantasy in Gilbert's work, even though some of the pieces are very straightforward and direct, as he said. I think he's really taking certain liberties with the 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 subjects he's projecting and he's sort of making them into heroic figures or even figures of um, sexual desire and um, I think it's very uh, that's very interesting and the big difference between these two portraits the first one I showed you and the second one in my opinion is that this this young man is almost it's almost a look of terror I mean it's a look of innocence but He's right on the verge of adulthood, and I think he's kind of terrified, and he kind of doesn't have a plan where the first young man was quite sure of himself. I mean, he, he knew, kind of knew who he, knew who he was and where he was going. And that just demonstrates the range that Gilbert is capable of, um, of communicating to us. Um, so that's why these two pieces are remarkable to me. Thank you. Certainly. So, Patrick, I want to say thank you for that. And I completely agree, and, and I feel that something you're putting your finger on here is that every single one of Gilbert's characters are full-bodied, three-dimensional human beings, and it's part of what makes his work so compelling. You feel as if you are meeting an individual person every time you encounter one of his works, and I think that's very much the experience of the exhibition uh, as I walked through it um, for the first time myself yesterday. Yeah, Gilbert spent a lot, apparently he spent a lot, spent a lot of time with these models. He got to know them and um, he, he learned who they were. They kind of gossiped and had chit chat and got to know one another. And that really comes through in the paintings. Uh, they're very fleshed out three dimensional people and you, um, they're psychologically, psychologically complicated people. You, you really want to know about their interiority and you wonder who they are and what they're yeah. thinking. And um, they're amazing. So I'm gonna move on to gallery number two, which is Woodmere's Corridor Gallery, which many of you will know is sort of a, an L-shaped gallery, a long corridor with an, that opens out. And in the corridor, we have on view in pairs, set six feet apart um, are portraits that Gilbert made of older folks, seniors, who he met 
um, when he worked as an art therapist in a senior center in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. And there you see in the upper right, a photograph of Gilbert shaving an old fellow um, at the senior center. There's a real intimacy between Gilbert and his sitters. And he made the making of portraiture part of the art therapy program that he, that he implemented at the senior center. People would watch him make these portraits. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, there are about 33, I believe 33 to 35 portraits of the seniors who became Gilbert's friends. And they are truly remarkable, full of life, deeply, deeply, deeply moving um, in the exhibition. And I thought um, I would read a statement that to me is just so powerful. One of my motivations in painting has been to celebrate the beginning of adulthood for the young and the final period of life for the old. What struck me is that both young men and the old are ignored by society. Despite our ostensible focus on youth, young men are in a sort of netherworld, no longer teenagers and yet not fully adults. They're in transition with no established identity and no real place in society. A nursing home is basically an orphanage for elderly adults. It's a place where people don't really have their families anymore and visiting relatives and the staff constantly tell them what to do and don't stop to hear what they have to say. What they have, what they had in common with young men who modeled for me is that they could talk and know that someone was listening. And I found that to be an incredibly moving and very profound statement that to me in so many ways ties together two bodies of work in this artist's career. A body of work, his portraits of young men that you know, I believe that he felt were his fine art, his main work. Um, the portraits that he made of the seniors who were his friends um, haven't been exhibited before and were something that he did as part of the way that art was integrated into his life participating in society as an art therapist. And there's just a beauty and honesty to them that intertwines and interweaves with the portraits of the young men that I think is incredibly uh, powerful and moving to me. And I do just love this statement. Um, the old folks and the young men are joined together by an astonishing work of art that you see here it's called Sick Boy. It's a portrait of a young man with palsy who lived in the senior center with the other older folks. And here you see the sick boy. He's made out of uh, one, two, three, 15 panels of individual paper that are put together. It's a fragmented work, fragmented um, like the body of this poor young man who lived in the senior center and who Gilbert knew. And it's with this work um, that I'm going to introduce Jody Throckmorton, who um, is joining us on the call and is gonna talk a little bit about um, the show at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And you can see here um, that the sick boy's portrait um, is depicted in this depiction. And that's all I'm gonna say and just introduce Jody and thank you, Jody, for joining us today. Thank you, Bill, for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to, to get back and, and see your show soon. Um, it feels like something we've all been talking about for a long time. So mm. thanks for including me. And you know, I too wanna to thank Eric for his support and also thank Bill Scott because um, being in his living room and um, him introducing me to Gilbert's work was a real revelation. So I'm really grateful to you, Bill, for, for introducing me to, 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 to his work and also for, for leading me to the subject of PAFA's show, which is, um, is all, it's called Only Tony, Portraits by Gilbert Lewis. And 
where the Woodmere show is this wonderfully, incredibly wide span of Gilbert's, Gilbert's entire career, really. Um, only Tony goes very deep uh, by focusing on only one model. Um, a model named Tony Rulo, who has come up a few times and I believe is also on the Zoom call and has been making some comments. Um, it was really a chance for me that I got really excited about, about how many opportunities do you have to do an entire show um, of the work of, 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 of one artist um, working with one model. And so what happens is that it's the statement that you read, Bill, is actually quite perfect because you were talking about that nether world of youth and that transition, or I guess Gilbert was talking about that. And that's something that I think is really captured in, in this exhibition um, of Gilbert's work, All of Tony, because you see, you see certainly the evolution of Tony and the things that he was going on, going through in, um, in a, a decade is roughly what, what the show um, encompasses. But you also see um, the evolution of the artist and how his style changed across the decade, um, which I think is really incredible. You also see the evolution of 1980s and 1990s fashion, which um, we've seen in some of the images Gilbert is so incredibly at do incredible at doing um, and something that I really, really love. And the story, the story also crosses um, certainly the you know gay culture in Philadelphia, but also the AIDS crisis in Philadelphia, and um, it's something that we'll be getting into in the project as well. You know, and, and Gilbert was a was a path is a beloved path path alum, and a beloved um, um, professor at Path as well. So it's wonder went to went to school at Path in the '60s with wonderful artists like Jody Pinto. So um, it's wonderful to, to have the show of his work there. And this painting I think is absolutely one of, one of uh, Gilbert's masterpieces. And, and I've done a few interviews with Tony and talked with Tony about this. And, and he says that Gilbert always said that this was one of his masterpieces. And, and I love how um, in the way that, that artists capture their studio in fascinating ways, you have a masterpiece within the masterpiece with Sick Boy being in the background. And something kept coming to my mind that Tony said quite a bit is how, and I think Bill, you mentioned it early in the presentation as well, is how a lot of these paintings, though they are of, of other men or young men, they really do reflect Gilbert. Um, and they do, in, in some ways, they're, they're self-portraits of him. And, and Tony mentioned to me that that's something that, in fact, Gilbert had said to him. So it's such an interesting moment where you see Tony draw, making a drawing of himself um, with this very uh, personal uh, painting uh, drawing in the back of, of Sick Boy, of something that's so important that um, something that really moves me about about Gilbert's work, and and yes, I'm sorry. The yes, the opening. Oh, I think someone was asking if yes, the Paffa Show will be open to the public. Um, the museum will be opening in September, but then then we'll be coming back with this show um, on November 19th. And and stay tuned because we hope to do uh, do some public programs as well with Woodmere and Cap Cap and everyone. And hopefully this will be a, a celebration of Gilbert through through spring of 2021. So thank you. Well, Jody, thank you. And there could not be a better collaborator than you so it's so wonderful to work together and I can't wait to see how you tell this fascinating and deep story so thank you again um, one of the interesting things about Gilbert and you know as I was listening to you speak Jody I, I noticed that this chair which looks like it has a blanket wrapped around it appears in one of the earlier works the the fellow that has the dagger and heart on his arm I think is sitting in the same chair. And it's interesting that, you know, as you get to know Gilbert's work, and I have to think with your focus on only Tony, um, you know, that, 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 that there is this specificity of the studio, of the place, you know, of textiles that keep reappearing and almost become this, uh, you know, this, 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 this intimate world of the artist that you do get to know through his work. And that honesty is, is a big part of what I think makes him so compelling. So I'm gonna move into the final gallery of the exhibition, which is dedicated to Gilbert's nudes. Um, these are male nudes. Some of them are monumental in scale and truly spectacular. Um, there's, again, so much that we could say about these nudes. Um, when I look at them, there is a raw carnality. This is absolutely a gay man's perspective on what sensuality and carnal love is. 
And I have to think, and there's such an elegance to Gilbert's work that, um, I mean, I can't look at these works and not think of the old masters and specifically the great reclining Venus figures of Titian and Giorgione. And with reclining, which is a, a pretty stunning work, um, I, I do think of these, these Venus figures reclining on their white fabrics because of course white fabric um, symbolized the purity of physical love. And um, you know, I, I, I do think that for Gilbert, you know, whether he was or wasn't interested in the specifics of Renaissance iconography, um, we know that he was the kind of artist who at the end of the day, the guards had to ask him to please leave because the museum was closing. So, you know, he was looking carefully at the old masters and I, I believe that this channels into um, his work and, and I feel it most strongly um, with the nudes, which are um, very erotic, um, but at the same time, very classical. And that's what makes them so wonderful to me. Um, sorry, I lost it there. Um, and there's a wonderful group of nudes. Um, I mentioned earlier, Gilbert's pencil work is astonishing. And um, in the gallery with nudes, um, we have two works, um, you know, made in the mid and the late 1980s that we hang next to each other, one in Woodmere's collection and one in the collection of John Wind. Um, paintings that are made with gouache and pencil. And they've got this silvery kind of tonality and light that's very atmospheric in a unique way. Um, very beautiful, very emotional. And, and I don't think the slides do justice to the emotions of these two figures and how the emotions are conveyed in body language. And with this, I want to introduce Sam Cap, Cap Cap, which is Cap Cap, uh, the gallery. Um, again, as I said, in Philadelphia and New York. And Sam is presenting an exhibition that I can't wait to see. Gilbert Lewis, The Mind of Man, on view from September 11th through October 24th. And um, this, this fellow in pencil with a gouache yellow background um, is something that you know, Sam had said to me he was hoping to talk about. So Sam, I'd love to hand it off to you. Thank you, Bill, and hi, everybody. Um, I just, but before I get into things, I just wanted to give a special thank you to, um, to Bill Valerio, of course, for um, uh, organizing uh, tonight's event and for the incredible exhibition at Woodmere. But um, I wanted to extend another thank you to Eric Rimshaw and Jim Fulton, Bill Scott, Jody Throckmorton, um, and to Janice Orma, um, William Way, where I actually first became aware of Gilbert's work. Um, there's a wonderful, a wonderful piece of Gilbert's hanging. I, I think it's permanently hung at, at um, William Way, and that was uh, where I where I first encountered Gilbert's work. And um, and it, and then um, a little later on, Jody actually um, made me aware of the the exhibition she was working on, and and so so began my um, my my interest and and love of. Gilbert's work, and I, I so appreciate what Bill was mentioning about the old masters, and I, I really, I think the same thing, especially looking at these um, graphite and grayscale works. Um, there's a there's a really incredible book that um, I, I believe Bill Bill Scott or Eric Grimshaw um, mentioned to me, which was uh, Philadelphia, the Intimate City, a book from the, the late 60s that um, has this really beautiful photograph of Gilbert um, drawing in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And I, I think that really, um, and, and he was a young art student at the time, but I, I um, old masters and his interest in uh, Greek and Romanesque statues and sculptures. And um, I, I can't help but, but think of those when I look at these grayscale works and um, and again, there's the sort of interesting textural dynamic between the gouache and the watercolor. And, um, and I, the, the yellow piece, which was just on the last page, which will be in, the, uh, will be in my exhibition um, in September, I think is just a, a really, uh, especially, I think it translates a little better than the, the grayscale works over the screen, just because you can see the immediate difference in color. But um, you can you just from looking at it you can you can feel the difference and the the graphite on the skin is so soft um 
but but this work also reminds me I, I think so much of Gilbert's story is a testament to community in so many ways um, I mean it, immediately he was always drawing from from live figures so um, these weren't people from his imagination there were there was a community and a network of people who um, he was in communication with and and you see the same figures repeat through the years and I, I think that's just such a special piece of Gilbert's work. Um, but then of course there's the the local Philadelphia community and he was um, very very much tied to, to Papa as a, a staff member and um, and having worked at the, the uh, retirement home there were uh, there's just there's so many ties and um, and and then the support of his queer community around him I mean I think Eric and Jim and Bill Scott, your your um, support of Gilbert and his work is just a testament to um, the type of the type of guy he was. And I think it's um, it's it's so special looking at his work because yes, there are intimate glimpses into to gay life. Yet it does not feel predatory. It does not feel um, it, it it feels so earnest. And and there's a there's a clear connection between Gilbert and his subjects. Um, and and one thing that has uh, struck me about Gilbert's work is the the differing planes um, that can exist within the same the same painting or drawing. It's the the face can be on one plane, one angle, and the body can be on one, but the the chair and the bed could be on another. And and I think for that reason, uh, I mean, of course, it's a, an intimate look at um, Gilbert's peers, but. But it, it's also, uh, I think it's so, it's so clear this is his eye. Um, and, and so when I was considering my exhibition, I was, uh, I, I, I kept coming back to um, ver struck me, which is where the title of my exhibition came from. And I, I just thought I'd sort of end reading the quote because I, I, well, I'll, I'll let the quote do the speaking, but. Um, it reads, but time, unfortunately, though it makes animals and vegetables bloom and fade with amazing punctuality, has no such simple effect on the mind of man. The mind of man, moreover, works with equal strangeness upon the body of time. Um, and I, I, I think especially with Gilbert's dementia as it set on, it's really a testament to, um, th these works are a testament to, to his vision and his perspective and and his care and um, attention to to his figures. Um, so uh, again, I just I wanted to say thank you to everybody and um, and I I'm looking forward to seeing Woodmere's exhibition myself. Well, thank you, Sam, and and I think that your remarks about Gilbert and community ring very true to me, and so. In addition to the William Way Center, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, being a champion of Gilbert's work, um, the Mazzoni Center also has a wonderful painting by Gilbert that was also a gift from you, um, Eric and Jim. And if if you know those of you who don't know, the Mazzoni Center is the LGBTQ healthcare crisis center counseling center. Um, here in Philadelphia, it, it plays an extraordinary role in, you know, the life of the gay community. And it's wonderful to see that, you know, on the third floor of that building, which is the building where the sort of the community meetings and, and sort of open sessions happen, there's a beautiful painting by Gilbert, you know, on view there. So, you know, whether it's the, the William Way Center or the Mazzoni Center, you know, Gilbert is part of that image world. And, that's important, and um, and I think we owe it to you, Eric, um, especially, um, but also to Bill, to Bill Scott, for the generosity that you know has really, you know, made Gilbert part of of you know the imagery that you know fills this world, that fills this community. So, thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to move along a little bit and talk about the um, the digital exhibition that's. I'm um, going to be online as of September 1st at the William Way Center. The William Way Center is going to be putting a large number of Gilberts where they're digitizing a larger number of works and putting them online so that they can be visible. These are three examples of the works that are going into the 
online show. It's being organized by, by Jan Orma, who was um, mentioned already, and an artist, Aaron Feldman, who's a wonderful young artist, and I'm gonna talk about him a min in a minute. Aaron and Janice um, sent me a curatorial statement um, asking me to read it tonight, and I'm going to do that right now. Um, this is their curatorial statement um, as associated with their digital effort to get Gilbert's work visible and online in a broad way. A and here I'm just reading, an old judgmental homophobic trope is that older gay men prey on young men. And I'm set to adjust my screen a little bit. Um, Gilbert confronts that lie with his sensitive attention to visually capturing the figure of the late adolescent male who is still tenderly naive about the world of adults. His portraits are suffused with his care of his subjects, conveying the wide, the wide-eyed awkwardness of boys about to become men who seek guidance and protection in the safety of their artistic relationship. Gilbert's portraits are haunting, beautiful, and honest. And um, you know, I would say I agree um, with everything there. And I really look forward um, to you know seeing what Aaron and Jan um, create um, on the, the William Way website, oh, which, they, which, which they intend to be there um, forever. I wanna talk a little bit more about other stuff happening at Woodmere. Um, many of you may know that um, Woodmere has a podcast called Diving Board. And we've produced an episode of Diving Board I'm asking everyone on this Zoom call to please subscribe to our podcast. We get more funding for it if we have more subscribers, so it makes a difference. But um, the Diving Board podcast has a conversation with Eric and Bill Scott and others who were important in Gilbert Lewis's life, including Noel Butcher Hanley, who I hope is with us tonight on this Zoom call. Noel um, had a gallery in Philadelphia that was a very important gallery for realism in the arts. And Noel was Gilbert's dealer. And Noel spoke so beautifully, I have to say, about Gilbert's still lives, about the emotions of his still lives. And so, you know, look at this still life. You know, it's, it's a tulip that has finished and is faded and collapsed. And then another still life of you know, rhododendron leaves and a sprig of rose that's gone. It's a rose leaf. And it's got an amazing use of white and background. And I, I don't think it's bizarre to say that to me, this still life satisfies for my soul what a Charles Demet still life satisfies. And I mean that. And there are a few beautiful still lives by Gilbert in the show. And I have to believe that with still life, he just showed off his technical virtuosity in a way. And Noel, I have to say, describes it gorgeously. The Diving Board podcast um, is available on Woodmere's website. And I'm just bringing us to um, go to Explore Online Podcast Library. You can also just go to iTunes or SoundCloud or wherever you may get your podcasts. Um, here's the Gilbert Lewis podcast. Welcome to Diving And Board. I'll just click but randomly. We all these wonderful museums. Some of them are out of the way. This is the voice and of Jody Pinto. I began to understand Gil as a gay man in a very intimate way. He was cute as anything. Gil had a thing for shoes. Now they talk about men having a thing for women's shoes. Well, Gil had a thing for shoes. So when we were in any country where they made beautiful shoes, Spain, Italy, Amsterdam, Gil would buy a pair of shoes. We didn't have much money, but Gil found money for shoes. So anyway, Jody, if you were on this call, Spain, thank you. I remember we walked down the corridor of the Prado and they had all the Goyas, the horrors of war under glass. And I remember we were always chatting but when we went down that corridor, we both were so moved because, you know, when you see a reproduction, it's a reproduction. 
but when you look down and you see the actual prints, we were both sick to our stomachs. And we both had lobber legs. And then we turned the corner at the end of the corridor and there was the 8th of May and the two portraits on either side and the horrific paintings also on either side. And Gil had a funny way of looking at things. He could say something that was hilarious, but he would say it in a very sort of nondescript way. We both didn't talk much for the rest of the day. I'm going to stop it there because it was hard um, to, to not stop it, but I want to move us along. But the podcast is deeply personal and I believe brings Gilbert to life in a way um, through the voices of these closest of close friends. And I hope you will please subscribe to Diving Board, but listen to the episode about Gilbert. It is positively profound. And, you know, I want to thank Jody Pinto and everyone who participated in the podcast. Um, I also want to describe the catalog for the exhibition, which is a digital catalog. Um, digital catalogs have a life and have a circulation in the thousands upon thousands that printed museum catalogs don't have. And I just want to describe that the heart of the catalog is an oral history that describes um, Gilbert Lewis. It's a conversation with, you know, many of the people who were part of Gilbert's life. Um, you know, Eric, you know, as well as, as Jody Pinto and, and Bill Scott um, and others. The other thing that I'd like to say about the catalog and what to me is just so important and I believe a major accomplishment and many of the people who are on this call contributed to it. In this page that you see underneath here with the dates, there's a chronology of Gilbert's career, a detailed chronology. I have to thank Bill Scott above all others for the thoroughness of this chronology, being able to reproduce, a, to create and to make public a chronology of an artist's career puts them into the history of art. And I believe that that is so important. We can see, you know, what are the group shows that Gilbert participated in? He participated in group shows in many major museums with other artists. And um, it, it allows us to just place him in the broad stream. So the catalog is an important part of the achievement of the exhibition. And I hope everyone will go onto Woodmere's website um, and enjoy the catalog. We have upcoming programs. We have upcoming Zoom talks. So if you've enjoyed tonight, you will enjoy even more. Um, we have a gallery talk. We've been Aaron Feldman, the artist who has organized the digital program at the William Way Center, is a young artist, um, a recent graduate of the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. You see his painting there, um, a self-portrait spilling over a bed Woodmere has a purchase prize at the PAFA annual show. One year we gave it to Aaron, um, not knowing that we would come together over this exhibition. Um, Aaron is going to offer a digital gallery talk with an artist's point of view on Gilbert Lewis's work. And I'm looking forward to that and, and, you know, and, and, and to what that means. And, and to what that reveals from, you know, the point of view of someone from, you know, a, you know, relative to me, a very young generation. And so it's really been wonderful to work with you, Aaron. And then um, we have a Zoom lecture coming up on October 10th by one of the art historians that I love the most in the world. Um, my friend, Chris Reed, Christopher Reed, who is distinguished professor at Pennsylvania State University who's written a book, who's written many books, who's written an awesome amount of books, um, who wrote his dissertation on the Bloomsbury artists. Um, he and I went to graduate school together. Um, Chris has written a book, Art and Homosexuality, a History of Ideas. And this is really, you know, in, in my view, one of the great books that grapples with the way homosexuality has changed as a concept um, through time. So it meant 
you know, something different in ancient Greece than it meant in the Italian Renaissance for Michelangelo, or more recently, um, you know, for artists like Andy Warhol or David Wanarovich. And I do, you know, in my, in my heart and in my brain believe that there is no person on this planet better suited to really considering and thinking about Gilbert Lewis across the broad stream of art and homosexuality. And um, I love Chris's title, Gay Community Nudes, The Times of Gilbert Lewis, um, you know, making a play on, you know, the gay community news. And um, Chris is just wonderful. And I'm so happy to that, you know, we're able to present his, um, his lecture. Of course, all of these things were planned, were planned to happen um, in real time at the museum, but you know, we believe that in October, this is all going to happen via Zoom. And finally, at Woodmere, we believe in playful learning that there are all kinds of ways that simple games, um, especially, well, for young people, and for older people really make a difference. Um, the concentration game, and so here I'm showing you the splash page for the exhibition. This is where, this lives forever. Here's the podcast on it. So if you go to Woodmere Art Museum, experience and learn exhibitions, you'll come to Gilbert Lewis, many faces, many voices. Here's a description of the exhibition and click on this for the podcast. Here's all the information about upcoming lectures and talks Here's the digital catalog, you just click on that. And then um, just for some fun, and I think we all know how this works, you click on one square and then you click on another and you have to match them. And you know, at Woodmere, Hildy Tao is here with me. The playful learning movement is all about identifying how it is that simple games like this train in, see, see that, you, you learn things, um, how you predict, how you plan for the future, how you store and process memory, all of these things are incredibly important. And at the same time, they bring um, a focus on the works and you know, an identification and help people um, get into the works. So I love the senior portraits memory game. We will be doing that. And at Woodmere, we believe that you know, museums should be fun, so we hope um, you'll, you'll play the memory game. <laughs> um, I'll come back to the PowerPoint and say thank you. Um, I'd love to know if there are any questions, and before answering questions, I'd love to say please take our survey. Everybody who signed up for participation in this Zoom will get a survey. We want to know, was this boring or was it exciting? Could we have done things better? Did you like our format? Should we have been should we have been quicker? Should we have been should we have taken more time? We would love to hear your opinions. We're entering in the, this new phase of life where a lot of our engagement activities are going to be online. So we want to get it right, and um, and we want your feedback. So the survey answering the survey would be so terrific. We're working with a wonderful co-op student from Drexel named Juan Lee, who has written our survey. So you'll also be supporting Juan's internship and program at, at, at his, his learning. Juan is a wonderful young man who wants a career in museums and um, you know, he's prepared our survey for us. So look for it in your inbox and please be honest, let us have it. Um, and, and Are you unmuting? Like, Are you unmuting? You're unmuting. No, I'm not. Yes. So, and then so the last thing I'm going to do is um, I know that Jim Alexand, Woodmere's board chair, has joined us. And I want to say no museum could have a better board chair than Woodmere does. And so thank you, Jim. And I know, Jim, you want to express thanks and gratitude to everyone, um, as I do, who made this exhibition possible and contributed to its beauty and to its success. Showing here, you know, one of the very gorgeous portraits by Gilbert Lewis. This is a model that we've seen shirtless already in his gold chain. Um, and um, 
you know, coupled up um, with his partner. Here he is wearing a sweater that looks like quite a, an unattractive sweater from the point of view of, you know, how fashions um, fall by the wayside over time. But Gilbert really um, luxuriates in the details and the beauty of that pattern and that knit and the complexity of, um, of that sweater, which um, you know, may well have been a challenge to him from the model himself. So with that, I wanna say thank you to everybody for joining us. And I'd love to take some questions and maybe we'll start with Hildy if you have questions from the chat stream um, or you know, if well, others want to unmute themselves after Hildy, um, then we can take questions directly. But Hildy, are there questions for any of us? Yeah, there are a few questions. Um, Wanted to say that Tony, Tony Rulo, the um, subject of the PAFA exhibition, only Tony, is part of this crowd. And he's confirming for you, Bill, that um, the portrait that, the painting that Woodmere owns that you showed early on with the young man looking toward, into a room and, a young, and another man sleeping on a bed or laying on a bed that's kind of mysterious, he confirmed that that is a double portrait of him. Oh, really? Yeah. So you were right in your instincts, you're getting there. Here we go, this, yeah. this fellow right here. Yeah, that is a double portrait. If Tony didn't say anything about that, he also um, was saying that the, I think the slide before um, that you were kind of talking, maybe sit, sitting in the chair with the blanket we see later that Tony's sitting, one more, that one. And there's the blanket that you were talking about of, you know, the painting of Tony sitting in the chair painting in Gilbert's studio, that that's actually a, um, a portrait of the same model as the model before that one. So that, okay, so you see that. So we he about wants to one. talk about it, Tony, please. Oh, Tony. Come in. Tony, can we recognize you or can you unmute yourself? Hello. Hi, Tony. Hello. You can, I'm on, you can see me? Yep. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that was me laying in the bed also. And it's a funny story because I was modeling, Gilbert liked to paint the back of my head for some reason. He did that a lot. And uh, huh. I was sitting in the chair and I had a hangover from the night before. <laughs> so at one point he told me, go lay down in bed. <laughs> and I went and laid it down in the bed, and that's why it became this double portrait. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and Tony, could you talk about the, I think it's the young man sitting in that chair that we just saw you in, and that he's the same model, I think, did you say it's the dancer, the one before that? Uh, it was the first two that you talked about, the, uh, the man with the purple shirt. Oh, right, okay. okay. And this then fellow? sitting in the chair yes. with a tattoo. Yeah, so that's really? yeah, that's that's the same person. You're kidding. Um, so, huh. I know I could I could tell you a lot of I could tell you a lot of stories about him, but uh, I think he's sensitive about talking about those days. <laughs> but I even I even know all about the tattoo. Oh gosh. Well, uh, I would tell you in private. I look forward. <laughs> but that's so interesting. So the dancer and the fellow with the heart and dagger tattoo is the same figure. Yeah. The legs look the same. Yeah. Yeah. How interesting. I, it, it's very interesting to me because both works are remarkable to me. And in putting together this presentation, I started really with both of them because they're both so emblematic and sort of iconic of main ideas about Gilbert's work to me, at least of the works that I know. So that's fascinating to find out. Thank you, Tony. So, so I can answer the question about David Hockney. Oh, let's talk about David Hockney. So Gilbert loved David Hockney. He, he, was, he was a total fan. So when Gilbert and I were living together, we went to the Metropolitan Museum, and there was David Hockney in 1981, probably, maybe 1980, walking through the museum with two young men. And of course, he had his own entourage. And Gilbert wouldn't go up to him and say hello and tell him how much he liked him. He simply, we stalked him through the whole museum. 
we kept moving from room to room with them. <laughs> and he wouldn't go up and say hello. And I was, of course, too young to do it also. But he was, he really did love the whole way that David Hockney flattened the canvas and was very interesting about his perception. Well, that is so interesting. And, you know, I, um, I, I moved the presentation, this image of the front of the catalog, where we've used this, um, which is somewhat unusual work for Gilbert. It's this fellow at home with his cats on a yellow sofa. And it's a work that, that does remind me of, of David Hockney's portraiture um, in terms of people in their environments in this very deep and penetrating way. Um, there's a portion of the catalog that I love very much. And it, it's, it's a portion of the catalog um, of this oral history that's here where Bill Scott is talking about portraiture and Gilbert's work. And that Gilbert's work is really speaking to portraiture in a broad way. And that there's David Hockney on the one hand for Gilbert and that the other figure is Alice Neal. And it's a passage that I hope everybody reads. And I believe it's true because I think, you know, both Dave Hockney and Alice Neal um, have a sort of a penetrating ability with, with portraiture that, um, that I believe that Gilbert shares. Um, and, and there are, are it's, it's easy to imagine um, that he was in, well, he was certainly inspired by David Hockney. I would like to imagine he was also inspired with, by Alice Neal. And I have to think that he was somebody who loved art and loved museums so much that Alice Neal had to be in his consciousness. So thank you for sharing that story. And it's very graphic. I mean, you know, we've all had that experience of, you know, you're in, you know, some fabulous public place and you see someone who's an idol right. in the distance and, you know, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Um, you know, David Hockney was still, was still relatively young. The other question that I can answer is that this wonderful black and white photograph that's in the Gloria Edding book. Gloria Edding was a socialite in Philadelphia who photographed every event in her life. So she did a book with, an, with another, um, another uh, a collaborator in 1964, which was one of the great black and white portraits of Philadelphia. And there's a double page spread of Jody Pinto and Gilbert painting in the in drawing in the in the in the classic cast gallery at Paffa, and he's probably he's probably he's probably 20. And um, I have two I have two copies of it. Maybe I can I can publish one of the one of the photographs one time. It's an amazing photograph of Gilbert as a absolutely adorable 19 year old. I mean, that would be great. <laughs> um, thank you, Alex. Uh, there were several comments and questions about the title of the book and Bill Scott did respond. Oh, it's called Philadelphia, the Intimate City. There you go. And it's and, a wonderful portrait of Philadelphia. And um, I think Dante Sabatino has said that he has even a brochure of the PMA exhibit um, that, um, in that, um, that Gilbert, I think it was one of the first solo exhibitions at the PMA. And if you wanted a copy or wanted to see the brochure, he did in the chat room give his um, email at Dante, Sab, Dante, D, -A -D as in David, A-N-T-E-S-A-B at yahoo.com. Dante, I hope I said that correctly. If not, just please chime in. It would be wonderful to have that. So you have to realize that I was actually a model while we lived together and he paint <laughs> me and there was a nude of me in that exhibit. Which, and it doesn't exist. And it, does, it doesn't exist anymore. It, it didn't. It got destroyed, unfortunately. But there, uh. is, there is a major picture of me hanging over somebody's sofa in the world. <laughs> I'd love to know where this giant picture of me in my plaid shirt went. It, it, it sold. And it, by the way, the other answer was Gilbert did not sell a lot of work in his life. His gallery representation in Philadelphia was very conservative. They didn't like showing his gay portrait. Um, he never was, a, he was never had the balls to, to move to New York and do his thing. He hated people to help him market his work. And so he, other than the Leslie Lohman Gallery, which was dedicated to gay art, art artists, um, never really got out of the world and portraiture wasn't popular and, and, and gay centric portraits were not even less popular in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, um, Bill Scott also responded to that, um, and I think it's, it's all in the chronology as well, 
Um, he did show with Noel Butcher, and she talks about that in in the in the um, dialogue in the conversation as well. That people would come into the still life that she when they saw the the nudes. People, you know, they just weren't that interested in it. But she was a major champion. She was a fabulous representation yeah. for her. For um, Bill Kelly McQueen would like to know more about Woodmere's mission and its support of um, current artists in Philadelphia. So Woodmere's mission is to offer experiences that touch people's lives with the art and artists of Philadelphia. And there are numerous ways to, um, for living artists to engage with Woodmere. Um, we have a Woodmere Annual, which is a juried show of contemporary art. And um, every year, you know, between 75 and, you know, as many as 100 artists participate in the annual juried show. And, you know, that's a way that we engage with and learn about what's happening on the ground in Philadelphia. So, um, you know, Woodmere is alive and, and listening and wanting to know. So um, I don't know if that answers the question, but, but um, there no, are lots of ways. I'm sorry? At any rate, um, yes. So, you know, I would say as the director of the museum, I truly believe that no museum can really be vital and truly serve its community if it's not serving the artists of its of its city of its region um and so you know this is a priority for us at woodmere and you know we do everything that we can to engage in the cultural life of the living city so thank you for the question thank and, you and finally um our dear friend ann standish would like you to remind people how to get time tickets on our website <laughs> thank you han so um when Woodmere opens to the public tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, um, we are opening according to all city rules and regulations and guidelines. There, you know, because we have to control the capacity and maintain social distance inside of our spaces, there are capacity issues associated with every single space in the museum, and we have. Um, created a timed ticket sequence through the day. So we ask everyone to please reserve a ticket in advance. If you simply arrive at the museum without a ticket, we will accommodate you if we can, but um, you might have to wait. And we have no idea um, how crowded or how not crowded we will be, but um, we invite you to please join us but please go on to our website, woodmereartmuseum.org, and reserve a ticket. We're requiring masks, which is required by the city of Philadelphia. We are screening staff on a daily basis. So um, we're taking every health precaution you know, that there possibly is. We want to provide a safe experience. Um, we believe that the experience inside the museum, you know, with the galleries will be quiet and introspective, um, you know, a departure from, you know, what the museum experience was just four or five months ago, where it was social and loud and, and all about person to person conversation and engagement. I think the new museum experience, at least in the short term, is going to be about people um, and, you know, an individual experience with a work of art. And um, we're doing everything that we can to make that possible. And my, my wish and my goal, um, you know, down to the smallest bone in my body is that, um, you know, everything that all of us have said tonight will encourage everyone to come see the exhibition in person because the, the, the exhibition in the galleries is 300 million, billion, trillion, zillion times better than any reproduction on the screen. These are wonderful works of art and to see them in person is what has to happen. And I hope that everyone goes to the PAPA show. I know that I can't wait for it. Goes to the show at at, at Cap Cap Gallery. 
and frankly, you know, I, you know, these are works of art that need good homes. And those of you who are out there who, you know, might be in a position, you know, to acquire works of art. I mean, these are wonderful works of art. To Bill, own. Bill, so and, let, me add, let me add to that and just say that as his caretaker, sales of his art right now go to his ability to live at Wincote Place where he is living right now. Absolutely. Extend his life there. So, you know, there, there's a lot of fraught ideas about the relationship between museums and for-profit galleries. I feel that those relationships are important if, you know, they are, are constructed according to all the right ways and the positive spirits. And, um, you know, I, I, I can speak that, yes, I mean, this is an instance where, um, you know, the artist's life and health and livelihood is being fueled by the sale of art. And, you know, I, um, those of you who might be inspired and, and, and lucky enough to be in a position, please reach out to Patrick, reach out to Sam. Um, you know, there are wonderful works of art that oh, need to come. And also us, Bill. I'm sorry, what was that, Eric? And also, also Jim and I, we can, and Bill, we have, we have, we have pieces also. Show. Well, there we go. So there's a million ways to do it. And, um, you know, this is a, a wonderful artist. And so, yeah. Other questions? Or, or does anybody want to make a statement? Um, does anybody who's on the Zoom call, you know, wish to speak? Christine. Bill, it's Jim. I just would like to thank you and your team. Jim for, thank you. For your steadfast leadership of the museum during unbelievably difficult times. And I think one of the cool things about this is when I think about the initiatives that you took over the course of the past couple of years to move Woodmere into the broader space outdoors. It turns out that that's the perfect time to have done this. And I just look forward to the world returning to normal and find it frankly to be really unfair to everything that, that you've done and everything your team has done to support and cherish and, uh, and celebrate Philadelphia artists that somehow that is now behind closed doors, although soon it will not be behind closed doors, obviously, but uh, having those doors be open the way they've always been open will be a wonderful thing again. Jim, thank you so much. And again, I would say no museum could have a better chairman of the board or no museum could have a better board of trustees. We are very blessed and thank you for those words. Thank you so much. Well, with that, it feels like we are at the end of this Zoom virtual opening. I'm gonna say again, please go to your inbox. The survey really matters to us. Please fill it out. We want honest feedback about, and ideas about, you know, what, what we can do to make these sorts of things more exciting because engagement is what it's all about. And a lot of engagement is gonna be happening online. Um, Anne or Hildy, I don't know, how many, how many people were with us tonight on this Zoom call? There were, I think, close to 70, Bill. 71 well, were, 71 was um, the highest number I saw. We're down to 38 right now. Yeah. Ah. Well, 71, I would say, is a huge success. And thank you all for being part of this. And, um, you know, our, our goal is for art to mean things in people's lives. So thank you for joining us tonight. And with that, I'm going to say a final thank you to everyone, to, to Eric and Jim, to Bill Scott, to Jody, to Patrick, to Sam. And um, Noel, if you're here, to Jody Pinto, if you're here, Tony, Tony Rulo, thank you for joining us. To everyone who lent works of art to the show, to everyone who supported the show, I, I, I very much hope that the Philadelphia Foundation is here. Thank you for supporting the exhibition and believing in it. To the Ed Andrade Fund, thank you as well. And um, with all of my gratitude and heartfelt best wishes, 
Everyone have a good night. Thank My you. glass is empty now. And I thank you all for joining us. And I look forward to the next. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.